iOS 26 is a massive update that will change your entire iPhone from not only a visual perspective, but there's a lot of new and useful features that are going to be coming your way later this fall. And so in this video, I'm gonna go over some of the best new features and also some of the hidden ones that Apple didn't spend a ton of time talking about. Also, keep in mind, this is a beta, so features and some of the visual elements, it might change before final release. Now, I did do an entire video about the biggest thing, and that's the liquid glass design. It's all new, it's coming to all of the devices, and so you can click the card here in the upper right corner, but as you can see, there's going to be a huge design overhaul, and your iPhone will look a lot different than ever before. This design is across the entire UI, and you'll see a ton of fun and sleek animations and glass elements all throughout. I would love to know your thoughts on the new liquid glass design in the comments down below, as I'm curious what everyone thinks of the new look. I feel like it's probably pretty divisive. Now, as I mentioned before, there are tons of new and useful features beyond just a fresh coat of paint to the UI. And one of them has to do with Apple intelligence, more specifically visual intelligence. And this feature is going to change how we use screenshots forever. Visual intelligence can now look up on-screen content. So say you're scrolling social media and you see something that you want to buy, but you don't have a direct link or what the product's called, you can just take a screenshot. And at the bottom here, you'll see a few different options. Now, this isn't just for buying products, but for anything that you see that you want more information on. So you can ask ChatGPT or you can do an image search, but also Apple intelligence will be contextually aware of what's on the screen here and try to offer up a few different recommendations, whether it be a link to that website or article that you took a screenshot of, add to calendar, or you can even highlight to search a specific area. All of the other screenshot tools are also present at the top, so don't worry, you're not missing anything here, but you're just gaining even more great functionality. The Messages app also gets some big changes, like being able to set custom backgrounds per conversation, and you can do this by just tapping on the name of the person in the chat, and you'll see a new layout of options here, and one of them is backgrounds. So from here, you can create a fun custom background, and it will change that background for you and the other person, assuming they're running iOS 26 as well. So you can set different backgrounds for different people or group chats. Speaking of groups, we also get typing indicators for group chats, and you can even send out polls. Now, this isn't just limited to groups, you can do it to whatever, but in a group chat, it's probably more useful to send out a poll, and you can have people vote on one or multiple options, and you can see all of the results uh, at any point in time. Finally, live translation is coming to messages, and if you go back to that screen where you tap on the person's name, you can scroll down to the bottom, and there's an option to automatically translate, and you can set that language to whatever it might be. So for me here, I have it set to Italian, and anytime a text comes from that person in Italian, it will automatically translate it to English. Live translation also carries over to phone calls and FaceTime calls as well. Speaking of phone calls, one of my favorite new sets of features is hold and call assist. So I like to think of this as having your own virtual assistant to screen your phone calls and also kind of help you get a break from being put on hold. So with call assist, you can now use a virtual assistant to basically ask the reason for why this person is calling with unknown numbers that are not in your phone. And it will, you know, explain to you basically why they're calling you and you can choose whether you wanna send them through to your phone or not. The next time you're on hold, you can also basically place the other person on hold when they put you on hold so that you don't have to listen to all of the music and you can go about doing whatever it is you need to do. And then when that person comes back, the virtual assistant will let them know that you've basically left, but you'll get pinged when they're back and you can go ahead and resume the phone call. In the Maps app, you now have a new Visited Places section where you can basically get a history of all the great places you've been to. And so if you're traveling around and you went to this great pizza place and you don't remember it, you can go back and look at your history. Audio Mix in the Music app will basically give you your own personal DJ and will mix the end of one song into the next song for a more seamless transition. Apple also created a new games app, which ties in Game Center functionality. The ability to play certain games with friends and the entire library of games that you've ever played or have on your phone, including third-party games from platforms like Steam if you're using something like a Mac. This just makes it so much easier to access all of your games, browse for new ones, and see what friends are playing. And you even get a dedicated section for browsing Apple arcade games if you want to.
Now, I do want to touch on some other features quickly, kind of more of the hidden or underrated features, but some of these are truly great. And as I mentioned earlier, with live translation being on calls and messages, you can also get it with the music app with lyrics from songs in other languages. You can finally change the snooze time in the clock app to whatever you want. You're no longer limited to the default nine minutes. Uh, you can set it to 10 minutes if your OCD is like mine and you want it on an even number. If you plug in your iPhone in to charge on the lock screen, you'll see a new time left until, which is default at 80%. So you'll see time left until 80% and could be 30 minutes or an hour, whatever the case may be, you'll see that at the top of your lock screen. Now, speaking of battery, there is a new adaptive power mode, which will make changes and adjustments on the fly in order to help you save battery based on how you use your device during the day. When listening to music, you can now get full screen artwork and backgrounds that match the album artwork. This is a little bit different. If you notice behind the artwork, the colors are matched to the album art. But if you're using Apple Music, uh, I don't know if this is going to come to third party applications, but right now with Apple Music, if the album artwork has animations, you'll be able to see that on your lock screen as well. Lastly, in the Photos app or directly on the lock screen, you might see new spatial scenes icon, which will automatically create a kind of 3D spatial effect on any photo, which gives it more depth and realism. This is great for lock screen photos, obviously, which is why it's available to create directly from your lock screen. But again, you can also do this in the Photos app. And so those are some of the biggest and then more underrated slash hidden features in iOS 26 so far. I'm going to be doing more content on this, especially hidden features, a like larger list in the future. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss those videos. And of course, let me know what you think of iOS 26 in the comments down below. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you around in the next video.